Shalom, I'm Jonathan Burness, and welcome today to Jewish Voice. Well, as you can see behind me, today's show is a little bit different. I'm coming to you from the inner workings of our studio, the control room. And it's right here that we have been able to tape shows with some very special guests. For today's show, I've compiled a few of my favorite interviews that haven't aired yet, along with a wonderful couple that will be bringing you Messianic Jewish music, all inspired and anointing. I promise you, you don't want to miss today's program. Today, we're watching a few of my favorite interviews that we haven't yet aired. The first interview that you're going to see has to do with this. How many of you know what this is? Yes, this is a ram's horn, better known as a shofar, and it sounds something like this. I haven't done it in a while, but... Not bad for being rusty, huh? In order to get a better understanding of the shofar, I asked my good friend, the former senior Messianic rabbi of Beth Yechad Messianic Worship Center right here in Phoenix, and currently a missionary to the Jewish people of the West Indies through his ministry, His Highest Harmony, Rabbi Harlan Picker, to tell us a little of the rich tradition of the shofar, its history and significance. Take a look. Today we're going to talk about uh, the shofar in depth. I really thought of you when I thought of this topic because when we talk about the restoration of the Jewish roots, the shofar is really one of the things at the forefront. There's a restoration in the church, isn't there? Talk about this restoration first. Well, the shofar is the ancient uh, instrument of Judaism. It's really the only instrument that has made it through the thousands of years And the church is so excited about learning about its Hebraic roots today. They're coming back, uh, Jew and Gentile becoming one new man, one in Messiah, Yeshua. And uh, the shofar really is the clarion call for that, no pun intended, because it really is the essence of God's voice. And people are starting to understand that when they start even a church service with the sound of the shofar, they are really calling God into the presence because one of its uses was to call the people to worship. And the shofar blast is very cutting. It it can carry for miles. So it seems to be a real common sense tool. If we're bringing our animals with us and part of them were goats and sheep, that's where we get the horns from. So we have what we need. We're eating the animal and we're using the horns. So review with us some of the specifics. You talk, it talks about being the voice of God, Mm -hmm. a call to assembly. Go Mm -hmm. through some of those specifics. Uh, The voice of God, the call to assembly. It scatters and confuses the enemy. It's used at the coronation of a king, which is very interesting. We know that it was used at the coronation of the kings, but I believe that 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it's going to be used at the coronation of the king, our king Messiah, when he comes back. So that's very exciting. Uh, It's used, uh, you know, as an instrument of war. And one of the things that I enjoy, people say, well, you mean they used it to tell the the troops what to do? Yeah, they did, but take a look at this. Now, this is a horn. This is an instrument of war. It's not only sounded as an instrument, but you can club somebody to death with this. Again, more than one use, just like the Hebrew language, we have one word that means a lot of things. We have one instrument that can be used for a lot of things. And we're, we're going to have you play them uh, in just a moment. Harlan, you've written a book called The Shofar, The First Instrument of God's Voice that we're going to make available that goes into this in much greater depth. But I think about four different blasts, the blower blast, the broken blast, the battle cry uh, or alarm, and the long or great blast. Let's go through those. Okay. Well, the, the first one is uh, the blower blast, and it's called a tekiah. And we believe, you know, there's no way to know, I, I, unless somebody was there, but I wasn't there, when the walls of Jericho came down, it's probably the blast that was used before they had the shout that brought down the walls of Jericho. And it's called the blower blast, and it's called the tekion. We'll do that here on the ram's horn. And nothing more than that. That's uh, a tekion. Okay, so we heard the blower blast, and the next one is the broken Blast. Talk about this one. Okay. The broken, uh, we're thinking, probably refers to when God called the Israelites into repentance for sin, as in Isaiah. And it's broken because that's exactly what God wants us to be when we've sinned. We're to do teshuvah. We're to 
turn to God and turn away from sin. And the three, the three sounds that are made are to remind us that we need to be broken. And we'll do this on the Jembok or the one from the Oryx. Sound very, sounds very biblical, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like Cecil B. DeMille, though. Okay, okay well, it? that's a beautiful, yeah. that's a very rich sound. Very nice Okay, sound. the third one, the battle cry or the alarm. Okay, this one is called the uh, teruah for the battle cry or the alarm. And we believe that this is probably what was used by Gideon and the Midianites. And again, the significance, as we talked about, we're talking about 300 Midianites sounding their shofars, I mean, 300 Israelites sounding their shofars as they were surrounding the armies of Midian, which said their camels were so numerous that they were like sand on the seashore. And the reason it was so significant is because the enemies of Israel knew that when one shofar was sounded, it meant the army of Israel was coming. So you can imagine 300 shofars being sounded, and it said it brought them into confusion, and they killed themselves with their own swords. And so this one is a battle cry or an alarm. And you're bringing out the big guns. So this, this is, is the, the big kudu. gun. This, yep. is the... this is from the kudu. Wow, listen to this now. Wow, that's the winner, I think, isn't it? Okay, so that's the battle cry. That's the battle cry or the alarm. And then we have the fourth one, the long or the great blast. Okay. This one is called the techia gadola or the great blast. Uh, we believe that this is what would have been sounded to give the Torah, the teaching and instruction of Mount Sinai, because again, in Exodus 19, 19, it said that the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, so it, we don't assume that it was a short call, and Moses spoke and God answered him in a voice, but what's really exciting about this is 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, where it says, with the shout of a ruling angel and God's shofar. The dead in Messiah shall rise, and those of us who are alive will meet him in the air and will for always be with the Lord. Yeah. tone and you can feel the anointing coming through that and I don't know if you feel that at home but in the studio you can feel the anointing Harlan thank you so much for thank being you, on the Jonathan. Jonathan. Rabbi Harlan Picker a big thanks to my good friend Rabbi Harlan Picker and if you'd like to know even more about the shofar be sure to get his book uh, we published it right here at Jewish Voice because it's I believe the information is so important the shofar the first instrument of God's voice. We'll get a shofar out to you. We'll get the book out to you. It will really enrich your faith. We'll be right back. Do you feel called to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Do you long to explore your identity as a Jewish believer in Yeshua? What can you do to better understand the significance of your Jewish roots? What can you learn from ancient Hebrews that will bring you closer to the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua? In his fascinating and insightful book, The Shofar, the first instrument of God's voice, biblical scholar Rabbi Harlan Picker reveals the Shofar's biblical and historical background while also bringing to light the Shofar's spiritual significance and how it can be used to worship Yeshua. With this book, you'll discover how the shofar can help you to understand the voice of God and what he's saying, how Yeshua wants you to be his voice, his shofar, why the ancient Hebrews used the shofar as a ceremonial instrument and not a musical instrument, and why the shape of the shofar is significant. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $60 or more, we want to send you the shofar, along with Jewish Voice's beautiful and authentic small shofar. Although it was traditionally used on biblical holy days, each and every day, the shofar can help you to better understand what God is saying, while also reminding us all to be His voice. Call or click right now with your gift of $60 or more to receive the shofar, as well as the small shofar. 
Your faithful financial support will ensure that urgently needed medical care will help hurting Jewish people suffering from disease and poverty. More importantly, your faithful financial support will bring hurting Jewish people around the world hope, health, and the truth of Yeshua. My guest in this uh, next interview, Messianic Rabbi Charlie Kluge and his wife Rachel are a couple who are near and dear to my heart. In fact, they married my wife and I down in Brazil almost 10 years ago, and they both had encounters with the living God that brought them to know Yeshua, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Take a look at their testimony. You have a really, really unique testimony, both of you. And one of the things that's unique about uh, you both, besides uh, the fact that you dress so well as a couple, is that as leaders in the Messianic Jewish movement, you both are Jewish believers and actually married before you ever found the Lord. Right. So you two get married what year? So we got married in 1982. And the interesting thing is we both love God and we're searching for God in our hearts for a deeper relationship with God, even as children. Charlie and I both felt felt that way. And then um, it's an interesting thing um, when we, the night we got married, now you know that Jewish people don't usually get on their knees and pray. That's not typical of Jewish people, Absolutely, right? Yeah. And uh, we, before the rabbi came to marry us, we actually got down on our knees, the two of us, and we cried out to God and we prayed that he would bless our marriage. And when the rabbi was marrying us, we actually heard thunder and lightning in the sky. And the spirit was so strong and we did not know that that was the Holy Spirit because we did not yet know the Lord, but he knew us, Jonathan. Yes, of course. This is 1982. And And we, we, Mm -hmm. we were shaking as we were holding hands and the rabbi was, you know, putting the blessing on us and we, we were just shaking and we, we couldn't understand, you know, what had happened. It, It was amazing. And we actually experienced a miracle that night uh, that we first got married. I mean, we were totally in the presence of God. So he was wanting us as much as we wanted him, but we didn't know him yet. And we had no idea what was happening. No. We went to our rabbi and we said, we want to know about God. Yeah, please, rabbi. where Where do we find out about God? He said, stick around. I'm going to speak about God in my sermons once or twice this year. (laughs) Can you believe that? that? And and we said, no, that that just doesn't do it. We want to know about God. Were you going to services, to Shabbat services throughout this time? We belonged to a Reformed synagogue. We just kept on searching and we kept saying, God, where are you? We we want more of you. Where are you? We went to every synagogue. They sting up, they sit down, they do all kinds of things. But you know what? We, as we, Scott, are you here? No, no response. And so we were invited to a church to be part of a baby naming. And we went that day, and we'll never forget it. Right. Because we were holding hands, and the carpet was red. And as we put one foot, each one of us, one foot on the carpet, and they took us to our seats as we walked down the aisle, the spirit of the living God overtook both of us, Jonathan, at the same second. And we started to weep and cry. And by the time we sat down at our seats, we were like, <gasps> we just couldn't, we couldn't catch our breaths. And we wept for two and a half hours. And it wasn't until later that we uh, realized why we were sobbing, and we both heard at the same exact second, Jesus is my son. I am God. Jesus is my son. The Bible is true. Come follow me. All this you're hearing, there's no, uh, there's nothing, no message that's nothing, compelling you. Nothing, All of this we nothing, heard at the same at the exact, same and we heard second. it at the exact same second, and I said, I said to Raquel, I said, do you know what this means? 
And you both independently heard this voice. Yes. Exactly, yes. right. Yes. It was not yes. an audible voice. It was a, God speaking to my spirit and her spirit at the same exact second. And we, we just knew it. We just absolutely knew it. And I said, do you know what this means? And while she oh was weeping, I, she was I weeping. Said, I said, how am I going to tell my mother? <laughs> <laughs> So what happens then? You you have this divine encounter in this. Yes, we read after a while in Zechariah twelve ten. It said, "And I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep." bitterly over him, like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. And that's what we were doing. We were <gasps> weeping and weeping from the inside of our kishkas. You know what kishkas are, don't you, right? <laughs> we sure do. And, and it was, the, and, and, and we were changed. Our whole life was changed from that second on. We were never the same. What a testimony the two of you are together. You really are one flesh. Yes, we are. Just a closing thought for everybody that's watching. You know, in him I live and breathe and have my being. I, I just, I don't know any other way to walk than to walk the word of God. And people who are really seeking and searching, I think they're going to find their answers in the word of God. And like I said, as Jews, we don't usually do that. And so I feel if you know, they would do that and, and seek him. They'll find their answers. Jewish people from the beginning have been desiring to know their Messiah. They've been praying for the Messiah to come. Mm -hmm. They have been expecting. And because when Yeshua came, when Jesus came, he didn't fit their expectations. Their expectations were that he was going to come and, and destroy the Roman army and, and, and lead them back to, to the land. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. He is king. And all every person has to do, because everyone is seeking, there's something in every person's heart that is seeking to know the answers. And all they have to do is open up their eyes and ears and hearts, and he will come in, and it's all about him. And you're a living testimony of a couple who loves God and uh, who's, whose lives were transformed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being on the program and telling us your story. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Rabbi Charlie Kluge and his beautiful wife, Rachel, for sharing their life story with us. For more information on their ministry, you can go to Shalom Orlando, all one word, shalomorlando.com. We'll be right back. Do you feel called to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Do you long to explore your identity as a Jewish believer in Yeshua? What can you do to better understand the significance of your Jewish roots? What can you learn from ancient Hebrews that will bring you closer to the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua? In his fascinating and insightful book, The Shofar, the first instrument of God's voice, biblical scholar Rabbi Harlan Picker reveals the Shofar's biblical and historical background while also bringing to light the Shofar's spiritual significance and how it can be used to worship Yeshua. With this book, you'll discover how the shofar can help you to understand the voice of God and what he's saying, how Yeshua wants you to be his voice, his shofar, why the ancient Hebrews used the shofar as a ceremonial instrument and not a musical instrument, and why the shape of the shofar is significant. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $60 or more, we want to send you the Shofar, along with Jewish Voices' beautiful and authentic small Shofar. Although it was traditionally used on biblical holy days, each and every day, the Shofar can help you to better understand what God is saying, while also reminding us all to be His voice. 
Call or click right now with your gift of $60 or more to receive the shofar as well as the small shofar. Your faithful financial support will ensure that urgently needed medical care will help hurting Jewish people suffering from disease and poverty. More importantly, your faithful financial support will bring hurting Jewish people around the world hope, health, and the truth of Yeshua. Welcome back to Jewish Voice. I'm Jonathan Burnus. Over the years, we've had some really incredible messianic performers grace our stage. Messianic Jewish music is so critical to the expression, the culture that we're trying to convey that it's Jewish to believe in the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. Recently, Barry and Batya Siegel, a husband and wife team who proclaim the good news through praise and worship and actually live in Jerusalem, uh, the word of the Lord, the Bible tells us, will go forth from Jerusalem. Stop by to share their music with us. Take a look at one of their songs. For more information on Barry and Batya and their wonderful ministry and all the CDs they offer, you can go to their website. It's Vision for Israel, all one word, visionforisrael.com. Lots of great materials on their site, and you can find out more about their wonderful ministry from Jerusalem. More ahead. We'll be right back. Come to where heaven and earth meet. Join Jonathan Burness in the Holy Land, November 30th through December 11th, for the Jewish Voice 2012 Israel Tour. Experience a land of rich history, walk where Yeshua walked, and explore the very backdrop of the Holy Bible. You'll visit Tel Aviv, Jaffa, Caesarea, Nazareth, the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of Beatitudes, and more. 
Call or click now for more information and make plans to come with us to Israel. I want to extend a personal invitation for you to join me and my lovely family in Israel this November 30th through December 11th. Listen, we've had a few people call or contact us Dad. expressing concern about the condition in the Middle East now. Is there going to be a war with Iran? Is it safe? We will not bring you to Israel if it isn't absolutely safe. And if anything changes, uh, we will refund your money completely. So I really hope you'll join us this year in Israel. We at Jewish Voice are passionately focused on proclaiming Yeshua, Jesus, as the Messiah to the Jew first and also to the nations all around the world. The need is so staggering out there, which is why we are determined to carry out our mandate and our mission, which is to go anywhere in the world where God's chosen people, the Jewish people, need help. 2012 is proving to be an incredibly busy and productive year. In fact, uh, just this past May, we conducted our very first medical outreach to the impoverished Lemba community in Zimbabwe. This is an ancient Jewish community, likely a lost tribe, and our medical team was able to travel there with phenomenal results, uh, offering free medical care, dental care, eye care to over 8,000 and over 5,700 from the Lemba community accepted Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah and Savior. And we're able to do this because of you, through your generosity. So from all of us here at Jewish Voice, thank you for your faithful partnership. Right now, your special gifts are needed as we prepare for upcoming medical outreaches. And as our way of saying thank you for your help today, I'd like to send you Rabbi Harlan Picker's book. We actually published it because I believe it's so informative and important. The shofar, the first instrument of God's voice. With this book, you're going to discover the shofar's biblical, historical, and spiritual significance. I also want to send you this beautiful uh, ram's horn shofar, which does work, by the way. And you can even do better with a little bit of practice. Uh, we've obtained these shofars, which are traditionally used during the biblical high holidays, reminding us of Yeshua's near return. And if you already have a shofar, we'll, we'll get this book out to you for a gift of any amount. And thank you for enabling us to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel around the world. Before I go, I want to take a moment to invite you to join us on Facebook. You'll find us at, at facebook.com slash Jewish Voice. Facebook dot com slash Jewish voice. This is a great way to get timely updates uh, on everything that's happening at Jewish Voice. And you'll have the opportunity to see what many of our friends are talking about. We'd love to have you visit. So stop by and join us on Facebook anytime. Well, we're out of time once again. Before I go, I want to remind you, as I always do, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Israel needs our prayers now more than ever. The Bible says they shall actually prosper who love thee. This is Jonathan Burnus saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 